Hello everybody, my name is Mark Desponde, and uh, in this video I want to uh, kind of go over some of the code that I'm going to be providing you guys so that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to worry about getting all like the, like the small machine learning model set up. You don't have to worry about that. I've already provided everything for you, but I kind of want to go through this step-by-step uh, -step kind of so that you're at least familiar with, with the code here. And so, you know, the first thing you might notice is that this actually not that many lines of code to get this something this cool up and running and that's kind of the um the standard with open that you can expect with open cv is that it doesn't take a lot of code to get something really cool up and running so you know as you look through this code you can see well hey this code is what we're gonna have to write probably because it's currently not really doing anything so you know we're gonna have to write this code here and actually let me return an empty list here so that we know that you know this will actually still function so uh, just to kind of go over some of this code here first things first is we have to kind of build some model some you know means of looking at all of our all of our images and you know our training data and our labels and so that we can you know correctly know that well this card looks like the king of spades and that's really what it is so I'll I provided you this train this training image and this comma separated value list or this I should say this is separated by tabs actually uh, tab separated values list that correspond to the label so all that is there and this model just kind of extracts um, all that data and builds kind of our model that I'm, that I'm calling here a machine learning model but that, that, anyway, that's what this this uh, whoops. Let's scroll back here. You know, that's what this function does. But you know, there are some utility functions that are here. Like in particular, there's uh, this reorder function. And basically, what this reorder function does is there's a comma here that says reorder points in a rectangle in clockwise order to be consistent with OpenCV. And that's really what this does. Is when we do any kind of detection with, you know, the, our contour, we have to make sure that we're we're consistent um, in OpenCV. In particular, OpenCV likes it when our rectangles start at the top left and then the points are in in clockwise order. And we need the, we need this uh, function because what we're going to do is when we detect the contour for our cards, we're we're robust to we want to be uh, robust to if there's like tilted or if there's like any sort of perspective tilt uh, to it. You notice that when I ran the the full code, you notice that when we saw our images, they weren't tilted they were anything. They were actually perfectly square. And so this function, we're going to need that so that when we can detect our contour around our card, we make sure that we, you know, we get the list of points in just some order. We can order the points so that they fit OpenCV's uh, a scheme so that then we can just apply what's called an affine transform we can apply that so that we kind of square up our square up our images so that's kind of basically what this function does um, it's, a, it's a utility function uh, that reorders our points so that we're consistent with OpenCV so that we can get that nice square image uh, there's this pre-processing function this is actually really common with a lot of uh, computer vision applications there's some sort of cleaning uh, that's basically done here and uh, what what we're doing here for for this kind of cleaning is first of all we're converting to to grayscale, then we're applying a little bit of blur. And the blur you might you might be saying, well, why do I want my image to be blurry? Here, that seems kind of counterintuitive. And, and the reason behind this is so that you kind of get rid of all of the small noise. I think I talked about this when we're doing when we're doing contour detections that you want to apply a little bit of blur. So that any so that you're you don't detect like these really small contours that are just like random you know image noise from like the camera that you were using at the time or something. So the noise uh, images can be kind of noisy. So this blur helps uh, kind of smooth out smooth out the noise. And then we see we have this adaptive threshold thing. You know, hey, wait a minute, but you know what are we doing here with this adaptive threshold thing? And so what adaptive threshold is, I didn't want to like, really get too much into this because it can be kind of complicated, 
Uh, adaptive threshold is a way that we can make our, it's a different algorithm used for thresholding, and it's used to help make our image a bit more, uh, it's a bit more robust to things like lighting. Because if you notice uh, in, in the, the image with the, with the, like the random objects on my desk, uh, you notice that you know, one part of the image is kind of lighter than the other, and the other part's like darker. And so with, when we were computing like with just plain old thresholding, now, the issue is that it's sometimes going to be kind of hard to find a global threshold, and so what adaptive threshold basically does is it will try to find a a local threshold, and then you know do these threshold operations more locally than instead of one giant global threshold. So that's what uh, adaptive threshold does. How it does it is a bit more complicated than regular thresholding, so I just kind of passed uh, on that. But anyway, this is just part of the image. Uh, cleaning and pre-processing steps so that the images you know are really nice so here is this next function is our um, comparison and this is how we're going to look at two images a and b and say you know how close how similar are they so then what we're doing here is we just again apply a blur so that we can kind of smooth out any noise we take the absolute value of the difference of these two images basically just uh, the difference using uh, you know matrices, and then we take the absolute value of each of the elements, and then we apply another thresholding operation on that, so that you know again it just helps reduce any of we're trying to minimize noise because when we're dealing with this, you know there's a lot of opportunities for noise to kind of, for image noise to kind of mess up our uh, mess up our results, and so we're trying to minimize that as much as possible. So you know and then this uh, numpy.sum just returns a single value that represents all of the errors. It's a sum of all of our errors. This closest card will, you know, given our machine learning model, then what this does is given any sort of input image, it tries to find the card that's closest to this, you know, to, to the given card. And so what it first does is it pre-processes this image, then it will sort our image and and what this what this does is it looks through all of the images in our model and compares it to this input image and it uses that comparison and then because it returns a single value we can sort on this value and so what we what we want to do is sort so that the first here the, the the first value here represents the label that corresponds to the image that's very that's the closest to this image. So we use this to you know compute. This is a metric of of image comparison, and the smaller this value is, then we know that these two images are really close together. So we try to find the closest possible match, and then return the the uh, the number and the suit of this of, of our closest match here. So that's that's kind of what we are. Uh, what we're trying to do, and we actually re we actually return the image uh, itself. So that so you know, and we'll get to how we do this image. But probably one of the most important functions here um, that we're going to be writing is called extract cards, and that takes this raw image and it takes you know however many cards that are in that image. This is what we have to kind of fix ourselves. And what it will do is wh what we want to return is a list. And with a list of images that are, you know, de deep warped or so that there's no like kind of bending to the image or like perspective tilting or anything like that. We want to return those nice clean images so that we can that we can see them. And you might be saying, well, where where is this even, you know, where is this used? And I say, well, let's, you know, let's find out. So if we look for extract cards, we see that it's particularly used in our model and in the, you know when we're actually executing the code and so you know we're it's kind of used throughout our throughout our, our app and it's it's really important and so we have to make sure that we're very careful while we're coding this so you can see it's used here so that we can actually see the images right we get all of the cars that are in this image so that we can see it and then here is where we get all of the cards in our image so basically this line we get all the cards in our image and then we return the card that is closest to any of the, you know, to this particular card here. So we basically get all of the cards in our image and we 
how we pass it to our model and say, hey, you know, which card is this? What is the number in the suit of this card? And that is what our model will tell us. So that is basically uh, the, the code that I've given you. And so uh, in the next few videos, we're actually going to be coding uh, this function. And it's not actually surprising. We're not going to take uh, that many lines of code to get this uh, up and running. Uh, but it's a very important function. And we have to ma make sure we're coding this uh, appropriately. So that's this. So in this video, I just kind of want to show an overview of the stuff that I'll be giving you, the code. You know, so just to go from top to bottom. Here, this just is a utility function that helps reorder our points when we get our contour. This pre-processing stuff just does some, you know, cleans up our image a bit. This image comparison is actually used to find the closest card. We want to basically find the card that has the smallest error to our given card in our training data or our machine or our machine learning model. And then this training data or this train function just returns our machine learning model based on these two key pieces of data that I'm going to be giving you the images and then the correct ground truth label so to speak. And then you know this just helps you to visualize what the resulting cards are, are going to look like. So anyway that is kind of this uh, provided code here and then you know in the next few videos we're going to be filling out this this function here.